We have already seen several tragic weather events in the United States this year that have exposed our vulnerability to disasters and served as a reminder that disasters disproportionately affect different people. It's a problem that is vigorously being worked on and one subject matter expert joins us tonight. Dr. Steven Strader is an associate professor at Villanova University who specializes in hazardous weather risk and vulnerability. And we are thankful that he is joining us here on Weather World tonight. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. For decades, meteorologists, emergency managers, risk communicators, we've gotten used to telling people to enact their severe weather plan or shelter or even evacuate ahead of hazardous weather. Each time we see examples of folks who don't. And instead of looking at that as people who didn't do it, oftentimes anymore, it's actually more accurate to think of them as folks who couldn't do it. Can you explain what we mean when we talk about the social dimensions to disaster? Far beyond the last 15, 20 years, what we did is we really had these two camps. We had social scientists, which weren't really considered true scientists, you know, until about 20 years ago or so. Then we ended up where we had meteorologists. And we tried to solve this problem in isolation, which is how do we better predict tornadoes? How do we prevent people from being killed? And we've done that to current date. We've had better warning systems put in place. We developed Doppler radars. We have social media that's come in in the last 10, 15 years. It's played a huge role. And what we've seen is tornado mortality has dropped as a result since the 1920s, really over the last 100 years. But what's really interesting is when you start looking at the last 30 years and you look at tornado mortality, uh, it's really flatlined. Unfortunately, we've seen, um, and when we look at the regional level, like the Mid-South, we see that mortality is actually going back up, which is the opposite of what we want. And the reason for that is because of the societal elements. For instance, if you think about Twister, what was the goal of that movie? It was to figure out how to better predict tornadoes and, and lead to longer warning times. We've seen really a number of instances in the last you know, couple of years, at least, where we've had tornado warnings with hour-long warning lead times and people still were killed. So to me, that illustrates the importance of the societal elements. And that issue with fatalities, despite these long lead times and better warnings, your work and the work of a bunch of social scientists has helped to put to bed this stereotype of sorts that people don't know what to do. While that sometimes is still the case, when it comes to sheltering or evacuations, there's a different issue at hand here. So when we talk about people that need to take shelter, where we used to say, you know, people in manufactured homes and vulnerable housing don't know much about the weather. And we've kind of done a 180 on that, realized they know a lot, if not more than the average person. The problem is, is that they know what they need to do, but they lack the ability to do that, which is inherently a social science problem, which I say that as a non-social scientist. I'm a physical scientist. I work with social scientists, but um, that's that's a hard thing for, for us to grasp as a field is that we, we can give everybody the perfect warning, but if they don't have the ability to evacuate or they make a single wrong decision, what do we do? So it's, it's, a, it's a, what I would say is a tangled knot of, of trying to solve this problem. And there are a lot of different factors at play here that do this preventing of getting to safety or, or being able to act. But one of them serves as the arbiter of sorts of, of all the others, and that is poverty. Uh, can you talk about how this really does stack the deck against us? Yeah, um, you know, safety can be bought. So I always think about this is, um, you know, the first car I ever owned, it was, we paid $800 for it, it was terrible but it did the job for a 16 year old, right? And, and who, who got in an accident and all that stuff. So what type of insurance did I carry? I carried liability only. It's all I could afford. You know, it's all my parents could afford. And that meant that, you know, when I did get in that accident, I couldn't pay to have my own car fixed. So what if you have full coverage on a car? Well, now you have that safety net. And we think about insurance as being a safety net, but also construction of our homes can be a safety net, social networks whether we are a member of a community or isolated out in rural areas, these are all societal elements that are related to poverty. And what we see is we see a lot of relationships between poverty and education and race and ethnicity. These are, these are factors where 
where I argue that the tornado may have only been on the ground for 20 minutes, but the disaster itself was set in place, the, 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 the ingredients for disaster, maybe hundreds of years before. And we've seen this play out in numerous different types of disasters. That poverty element is very critical because it, it hurts your ability to do the right thing. And several recent examples of that came out of the December 2021 Mayfield, Kentucky tornado, where workers were getting the tornado warning on their phones, and all they wanted to do was, was get to safety. And they're being told by their employers, essentially, if you leave, you're fired. And for some folks, depending on their life situation, you know, that's an easy decision. But for others, all of a sudden, it's a decision that is not so simple. Yeah, and, and you know, when I think about poverty, it's just the tip of the iceberg from the vulnerability side of things. For instance, I worry a lot about the person that lives in a manufactured home, is in the middle of the of the southeast, tornado threat overnight, right? Fast moving storms, the visibility is a problem. It's 2 a.m. They live in a manufactured home. They live in a rural area. So if they want to use their community shelter, they can't get to it because it's 20 minutes away. Their car is having trouble, so they don't know if it'll start. They have two kids. They're a single parent and they're living paycheck to paycheck at best. And now we're asking that person to get the shelter. That is a different, you know, we can ask them all we want, but their ability to do that is not great. And we are out of time for this evening, but there's still plenty to discuss on this subject, specifically ways to stay safe in manufactured homes, since we do have a lot of them within Pennsylvania's borders. So Dr. Strader will be back Thursday evening to continue the conversation. In the meantime, we will be back in just a moment with a recap of the short range forecast.